Hey everyone, uh, before I get into this video, I'm going to remind you we have a giveaway going on currently down in the description and the pinned comment. It is for a $99 Nintendo Switch eShop or $100 Xbox or PlayStation gift card as well as another winner winning a copy of Monster Hunter Rise for Nintendo Switch or two other winners winning a $20 Nintendo Switch, PlayStation or Xbox gift card. That's right, four total winners. Woo, man. That's right, we sweeten that pot, everyone. Head down to the description or pin comment to enter. All right, so we have to talk about something here that often is sometimes controversial but also interesting because there is a point where exclusive games help increase the value of a platform, right? One of the biggest knocks on Xbox and why the Xbox system has essentially always been in third place, uh, barring the Xbox 360, which was actually in second place behind Wii for quite some time, although PlayStation 3 did eventually pass it right in that final year. Reality is that Xbox always seems to find itself not selling as well as other systems, and it's gotten to the point that it's happened so consistently that Phil Spencer put out there before the Xbox Series X and S launched that Microsoft will no longer be announcing console sales. There's not really a point to not announce console sales if uh, even if you are shifting your market strategy to Game Pass and obviously uh, xCloud because it's not as if announcing console sales really impacts those all the time. But it is what it is. They are focusing on subscription numbers and all that and the things that they make the most money on rather than system sales. So what? We can kind of get a general feel of what how well the system is selling. Uh, based on a number of factors, including MPD reports and all that jazz. So we'll at least always have an idea. But here's the thing. When we talk about exclusive games, we always talk about how they make the value of the system increase, right? PlayStation is a more valuable platform because it has games like Spider-Man and Miles Morales and God of War and The Last of Us and you know Demon Souls, Dark Souls, whatever, uh, remastered, remake at launch of PlayStation 5, Astro Boy, upcoming uh, exclusive content, Final Fantasy 7 remake coming to PlayStation 5. Heck, you know, Final Fantasy 15 being exclusive. Like, this makes PlayStation 5 and the PlayStation platform a more desirable thing in the marketplace because you need to own that platform to play certain games. And this has become a bigger controversy with Xbox lately with their finalized purchase of Zenimax and Bethesda and id Software and how Doom and and you know, the next Elder Scrolls game and all, all these games are going to now be exclusive to Xbox in addition to the Halos and the Gears and all that. So Xbox has really beefed up its exclusive library as well. Not necessarily that you need to buy an Xbox system to play those games, but you need to own an X Cloud or Xbox Game Pass capable system to enjoy them. So, you know, PC basically or an Xbox or a Android device for beta of xCloud. So while they've expanded where their games are available, they're still within that Xbox ecosystem, making Game Pass, making the Xbox ecosystem more valuable. And obviously we have Nintendo, where Nintendo has, well, let's just say, lived and died by their exclusives over the years. No, Nintendo has proven with Wii U that they can't be successful just off the back of their exclusives. They need compelling hardware as well. But as we see with sales on Switch, all the evergreen titles, all the 20 plus million sellers, Nintendo systems are more valuable due to exclusive games. And we see this not just from Nintendo games. Golf Stories exclusive did really well. Snipper Clips is exclusive, did really well. Mario Plus Rabbids Kingdom Battle is exclusive to the platform, did really well. These all increase the value and the variety of games on Switch. Now, we're talking about this today because Xbox Game Pass, that you know subscription service that I'm personally subscribed to and enjoy, announced their upcoming lineup for Game Pass, which includes Outriders, Undertale, uh, Yakuza 6, Morita Boy, Empire of Sin, Star Wars Squadrons, which, you know, EA is, EA Play is part of it, so that, that's how it goes, <clears throat> Genesis, Genesis Noir, Nier Automata, Torchlight 3, Deadfire, Ultra Edition, and Superland. Already 
a really, really good lineup. And if you haven't played Super Land, by the way, it's it's a really good game. Uh, some of these were already on Game Pass, but are not being added to PC. One title, though, that nobody saw coming, had no fanfare, was not announced, is Octopath Traveler. And no, we're not talking about it just coming to Game Pass on PC. It's coming to Game Pass on console so it will be available soon on your xbox one xbox one s xbox one x xbox series x and xbox series s octopath traveler is no longer console exclusive to nintendo switch it launched on switch it sold over a million units it outperformed expectations and square enix was really happy so happy in fact they made a prequel to the game exclusive to mobile phones for some reason because I don't know why Switch owners couldn't get it. And then they did eventually bring the game to PC. And to be fair, when we talk about exclusives, because people might say Octopath Traveler already was an exclusive, a lot of PlayStation's exclusive library also ends up on PC later. So it, it it's not really a thing. Console exclusivity still matters. But then we see Octopath Traveler from Square Enix, which is a third-party developer, Going to other platforms, obviously showing that Nintendo doesn't really own the IP rights to it, and it was only exclusive to Switch by choice of Square Enix taking a shot in the dark. It's not like Bravely Default, where Nintendo, uh, if you look in the copyrights, has a little bit of copyright claim over Bravely Default. Octopath Traveler, they don't. Nintendo doesn't own Octopath Traveler, and they can do whatever they want with it. So I'm always torn when these conversations come up, because on one hand, if it's a third-party game, I think it should be on everything. I think there shouldn't be third-party exclusive games. I think third parties don't have an obligation, but it could be in their best interest to release these games on multiple platforms. And on another hand, you know, it's good to see Octopath Traveler find a new audience, a new audience that is going to give it a shot. It's cool that we're going to get this game in 4K60, maybe 4K 120, although the game doesn't need 120 for the kind of game it is, on Xbox. And it'll be even greater if there is cross saves where i could take my switch save put it on pc put it on console etc like yes i i'm glad you know as a series x owner that i can play this game again that i already own on switch and you know experience it again at better definition on a tv i'm 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 glad but at the same point i'm also a little bit sad because it's just another thing to take away from the switch but should i be sad about this you know, it, this isn't like they took Mario and made it multi-platform. But at the same point, Octopath Traveler is really, really good. And it was kind of a feather in Switch's cap that, hey, if you wanted to own a console, you had to own Switch to play it. Now, yes, yeah, Switch is still going to get the sequel. And the sequel to Octopath Traveler that's already been announced does look really, really good. It looks really, really different. More Fire Emblem inspired than the original Octopath. But that might just be the direction of the series where every series brings back old school mechanics in a different way. I kind of like that. I kind of like that it was just the unexpected, right? They could have went traditional and just stuck with what worked with Autobad Travel. And they said, no, we're going to keep advancing it and keep going to old school tactics that are different every time. I like that. So that's Project Triangle Strategy, by the way, for those who aren't aware of, of what the sequel is. So I'm just saying that I'm okay that this is multi-platform. Uh, you know, not just multi-platform, multi-console platform. But I also think that... I'm not sure what to do in this situation when Xbox has all these exclusives, PlayStation has all these exclusives, and Switch has all these exclusives because PC even has some exclusives because, like, most people can't be me. I own a PlayStation 5, a Series X, a Nintendo Switch, and a PC, and I'm, I'm not trying to flex over here that I own all that. I have made sacrifices in my life to be able to have these sacrifices that other people might not be willing to make as an example. In a family of five, we only have a single car right now. I'm not saying that game consoles are the only reason, but it's an expenditure that could have been put towards another car, another car payment, etc. But instead, I have these systems. Now, again, it's a bit more complicated than that, but that's the point. Yeah, sacrifice is made in other areas of your life to be able to afford this stuff, and I don't expect most people to make those sacrifices or be able to justify those sacrifices you know i could justify i'm a youtuber some of this stuff could be a tax write-off so there you go there's a justification not everyone has that justification i realized i lived in a privileged state where i could not only afford the systems but obviously uh be able to justify them in a way that maybe you can't but here's the thing i have to wonder how much of you guys care this is a major game to lose by the way 
You know, it, it, not really lose, though. Like, you're just losing console exclusivity. Like, do you care that you're losing Octopath Traveler? If you're an Xbox fan, are you happy? I mean, you have to be happy you're getting the game. It's, uh, even if you're not interested, it's better to have the game than not, right? But it, it's just, it, it's an interesting world we're living in where these systems are all driven by their exclusive content combined with their services and, and, and all that. And it, it's just, I'm not sure. This is the first time that I'm not really sure what to think other than, hey, if you're an Xbox owner, this is great. If you're a Switch owner, I don't know why it matters since it's an older game, but also at the same point, hey, it does technically take a small amount of uh, exclusivity away from Switch that leads to people maybe undervaluing Switch. And by the way, Project Triangle Strategy might was already announced for Switch, might be coming first to Switch, and then it might be a year later for the PC version, maybe two years later for Xbox. So like, it still might be like a come to first you know, comes first on Switch kind of situation, but I don't know. Maybe I'm overthinking this. Maybe it's just a lot to do about nothing. But still, I I do wonder. You know, is this a good thing? Is this a bad thing? I think I see both sides of the coin. I don't know where I stand, and I'm also in an unfair position because I'm not restricted because I own everything. So there isn't a game that comes out I can't play. Even if it comes out on a phone, I have one of the the latest phones. So I can even play those games. I'm not restricted. So you guys let me know what you think about this down in the comments below. I am Nathaniel RoboJance from Nintendo Prime. I got to thank you guys so much for tuning in. It's been a lot of fun. I uh, can't wait. The new camera uh, arrives tomorrow. For those who aren't aware why I haven't been on camera, although I was in the last video, that was actually recorded on the camera before it was broken. My kids broke my camera. Don't really need to get into the whole story now. I have a newer Better camera arriving tomorrow, just in time for the Nintendo Prime podcast recording. Can't wait to get a new episode of that out. Uh, also look forward, because this camera is capable of 4K60, something I was desperately wanting on the old camera, but wasn't possible. Uh, this camera is significantly better and actually better than the camera on my phone, so that's another good thing. Uh, so... Oh, I can't wait. It's going to be great. I, I'm, I'm just really excited to get back to my content making. All right, folks. Thank you guys so much for tuning in, and I will catch you in the next video.